So, member for Maple Ridge, mission will continue. Well, thank you very much, Honourable Speaker. I find it fascinating the member from Vancouver, Langara, uh, refused to even comment on the uh, money laundering crisis that we're facing in this uh, province, especially given the fact that uh, we have a second public health crisis in this province, which the opposition has brought up many times in regards to the opioid crisis, and money laundering is a very, very profound and big part of that. So I find it fascinating that the member chose to ignore the, uh, ignore the topic entirely in his response. But Mr. Speaker, it's essential in our view that BC never again be considered a safe haven for the profits of organized crime. For too long, people trying to evade taxes and wealthy criminals felt they could launder uh, dirty money in our province with impunity. And of course, this has a profound impact on the opioid crisis. Money laundering exac exacerbates the housing crisis as well in our province, making life harder for British Columbians and the BC community. So if we're talking about recovery, we've got to talk about housing. Housing in our province needs uh, to be provided for safe housing for our families in our communities, not to serve as a laundromat for illicit uh, funds. I know we're all committed to making sure that criminal money doesn't push BC families out of their communities. Money laundering also compounded the over overdose crisis, as I said, and we need to address the overdose crisis with compassion, but with an approach grounded in medical evidence. We're also committed to cracking down on the proceeds of uh, drug trafficking um, who have done so much harm in our communities. We're making progress on combating money laundering, and Dr. Peter German's report, Dirty Money, brought to light a critical discussion on how we can prevent criminal proceeds from infesting our society. Knowledge is power, and thanks to Dr. German and other experts who have carefully studied this issue, we now know the scope of this challenge and, and what steps need to be taken to address it. As of June 2020, 69% of the recommendations of Dr. German's report have been, been addressed. The number of suspicious transactions um, have declined with BCLC by 87% in the past few years. I want to, again, bring attention to the important warning for May 2019, the report from 2019. The rule of law in British Columbia is still strong, thankfully, but lessons from around the world can and should caution us if left unchecked, criminal elements can threaten the rule of law and democracy, and especially during a crisis, we must be vigilant. We can never take these institutions for granted. Democracy and the rule of law are so important. And we, on this side of the House, are committed to defending them. Thank you, Honourable Speaker.